Do you want a fun, easy to play opening with basically no drawbacks? Are you under 2000 ELO and play chess regularly but don't have a main opening that you really enjoy playing? Well, look no further than the Vienna. I have covered in other videos on my channel how to respond to Knight f6 and the movies f4, the Vienna Gambit, but in today's video, we're going to be going over two games that I've played in Online Blitz against very strong opponents in this line, where we have knight c6, bishop c4. And this, this is a beautiful opening, because the whole point is to control the d5 square. And yeah, many openings do the exact same thing. But this opening comes with a bit more venom than a lot of other ones, because... Your queen is still open because you have no knight on f3. The queen can rotate to the king side. And this bishop is very hard to get rid of if you can't play d5, which we just established that you can't do. So, my opponent goes knight f6. Logical move. We go d3. This is the setup. This is the setup you need. And we're looking for f4 in the future. Bishop e7, f4. There we go. If the bishop comes to c5, it's a bit more difficult because he's going to stop you from castling when you play f4 because it opens up the diagonal to your king. But bishop e7, we can go f4 straight away. And after castle, knight f3, we put a ton of pressure on this e5 pawn. Now if he takes, we take back, we're very happy. You know, it's like a king's gambit-esque position, except way better than a king's gambit. Like, this is incredible development and black still can't play d5 d6 is more common you don't want to take because black's just going to take back so we just castle bishop g4 common move and i love seeing bishop g4 because yes it pins your knight to your queen and yes that's kind of annoying you could play h3 and kick the knight at the kick the bishop out either force him to take or retreat. But I like this move king h1. And this invites knight to d4, which is a natural move because I can't take and my opponent's threatening him to take and double my pawns. That's exactly what I want him to do. So after knight d4, I go bishop e3 and I'm like, bro, please, please take my knight. My opponent says no, he goes rook e8, and the idea is that I want knight takes, pawn takes, bishop h3, rook g1, and I'm going to play f5 if my opponent allows me to block this bishop's retreat. I have the open g file, and my king is very safe. I'm going to rotate my queen around at some point, bring my knight into d5 potentially. The pressure on the center isn't gone. I want to march the other f pawn up if my opponent takes. The computer gives zeros, but it's a very easy position to play with white. My opponent goes rook e8. And this is a blunder, because after f takes e5, d takes e5, you might be saying, how on earth is that a blunder? You can't take because of bishop takes g g1. You're correct, but we're not going to take. The move is bishop takes f7, check. Now, if the king moves, you take the rook and you're up in exchange. Simple as. So the king has to take. And here you have knight takes e5, check. This is not an absolute pin. You can move the knight, but only if you're going to attack a queen or a king, and here you're attacking a king, so black can't take you. You also can't take the knight. So after the king moves, the knight takes the bishop. Common idea, but only when e5 comes with a check, which is why this bishop is so powerful on this diagonal. My opponent trades, and he takes on c2. And he goes, look, okay, yes, you won a couple pawns, you won my e pawn, you won my f pawn, but I'm going to win your c2 pawn, and how are you going to defend. Well, bishop h6. You can't take my rook because I'm going to mate you. So, okay, bishop f6. 
Maybe I now move the rook. No. No, the move is knight d5. If I move the rook, then the knight escapes. And black's okay. Because he controls this d5 square. And he's threatening d3. And if he can take d3, he can put the knight on e5. And black's... that's good. But knight d5... If you take the rook, then knight takes f6 check. You can't take with the queen, because rook takes queen. And this pawn is pinned, so you can't even take the rook back. And if you move the king, then we've removed the bishop that defended g7. So queen takes, or bishop takes, is mate. So after knight d5, my opponent finds one of the only good moves. Bishop takes b2. This bishop needs to stay on this diagonal at all costs to protect the g7 pawn so that he doesn't get mated. Rook b1 attacks the bishop. If the bishop moves to a3, this is mate, so the bishop stays on the diagonal. Rook c1. Here, I wanted the knight to move, and then I was going to take on c7. And again, the bishop can't take because queen takes g7 is mate. And this is way too much pressure for black to deal with. So, my opponent plays c6, which is a smart move, because it attacks my knight. And, once this knight moves, I can't take on c7. Here, apparently I should take on g7. And if bishop takes, then knight f6, check. Queen can't take, because the bishop is pinned, and I will just take the knight back. So after king h8, I can take the rook on e8, and this knight is still hanging. So after everything's said and done, I'm up in exchange with a very powerful attack. I miss that. I take on c2. And my idea is after pawn takes knight, I have rook f5, threatening if black plays a nothing move, there, there, and mate. My opponent sees this. Whoops. He sees this and he goes bishop d4, nestling his bishop on the d4 square where I can't attack it. And here, what happens if I take this? Ah, yeah, I didn't see this in the game. That's why I didn't play this. How many of you would have played this? Queen, bishop takes d5, seems like a fork. And after the queen moves, you take the bishop. But, queen takes rook, and if pawn takes queen, this is mate. You've got to be careful. Black has counterplay. So, rook f5, bishop d4, I go, huh. What can I do? How do I attack this bishop? I can't go rook c4 because pawn takes. So, I come up with e5. I play e5. Because I'm attacking the bishop, and I'm also cutting the bishop's connection to g7 off. Here, black only has one move. Black has to take. And after rook takes, black can't take, because this is mate. But black can play queen f6, right? Queen f6 threatens mate, attacks the bishop, attacks the rook, and defends mate. What a move queen f6 is. And I can trade the rooks. But I can't save my bishop. Because black's threatening two different mates. So I have to safeguard my king from checkmate. Queen takes h6. And we have an equal position. Alternatively, here the computer prefers queen takes g7. Queen takes g7. Bishop takes g7. You can't play rook takes e5 because bishop takes e5. So you have to play king takes g7. And then... What? Check. And it's basically just a draw. h4 protects the rook and stops back rank mate. That's not an easy move to find. Queen takes... Bishop takes e5. And you have to see, you know, five moves ahead. Queen f6 is a difficult move to see. My opponent plays king h8, and this is just checkmate. That simple. 
That's game one. Game one, characterized by... This happens all the time. Once the rook vacates the f8 square, there's so many tactics on the f7 square. Because if the knight gets to e5, it comes with an attack on the bishop. So it doesn't matter if it's defended by a knight. Because you now have two attackers on the bishop. In some variations, this knight isn't on f6. And you can have something like bishop takes, king takes, knight g5. Where you don't have to take on e5 first. Because if the bishop isn't protected by anything, you can just play queen takes. But you have to watch out for bishop takes c2. Game two, same opening, a little bit different. We have bishop to e7, d3, d6, f4. So basically the same as the previous one, but not quite. We have bishop g4 again. We have king h1. We have knight d4, bishop e3. But here, my opponent doesn't play rook e8. And by the way, the fact that I get this position again the, both of these games were played in the space of like a day or two. This happens all the time because it's the most natural setup for black to take. You know, you're going to pin the knight. You're going to develop the bishop. You're a bit scared, so you don't want to put it on c5. You're going to bring the knight in to put pressure on the pin. Natural moves. My opponent doesn't go rook e8 here, though. He goes c5. Because if I now take the knight, c takes d4. And black's probably fine. You know, he's got a nice little central pawn wedge, and I don't have any actual attack on him. So, I go a4. I don't want to trade all the pieces. I want to stop b5. And give my bishop a bit of a hideaway, because I want to keep it on this long diagonal. a6, knight e2. I'm now challenging this knight, because I want to play c3 to kick the knight out. Because, again, if I take it, he's going to take, and he gets a pawn on d4, and that's very annoying. My opponent takes my knight, g takes, bishop h3, rook g1. I mentioned this in the previous game, this is what I wanted. In the last game, though, we had the tactic of bishop takes f7, but in this game we don't, because the rook remains on f8, protecting f7, because if bishop takes, rook takes... No knight e5 or knight g5 comes with check. The queen will just hang. You can visualize that. You're smart enough to visualize that. So we get this position, which I love. Because this rook is so good. And it's really hard for black to defend himself. My opponent goes d5. Which is an interesting move. Because if I take the pawn, then knight takes d5. My bishop's under attack. I'm probably going to have to trade here. And these pawns are very loose. My king's looking a bit weak now. But I don't have to do that. I can retreat my bishop. But maybe there's moves like d4, which are kind of annoying. And black gets a nice central presence. The move instead is f takes e5. The only winning move. It's, it's not winning, but it keeps my nice little advantage. Because the knight's under attack. And black can't take me with tempo on my bishop. I don't have to take this pawn if I can attack something of equal value. And I also win a pawn in the process. So if black decides to retreat the knight. Then I can just win another pawn. And I'm two pawns up. And these are some strong central pawns, right? I also have this attack going on on the king's side. You know, it's looking rather scary for black. Black does find the best move. D takes c4. So obviously I have to capture his knight. So I lose a bishop, he loses a knight. But I did win this pawn on e5, remember. He takes on f6. And here I go knight f4. I don't know why the computer gives that as an inaccuracy. Because it's literally its favourite move. I have no idea why. It's... I'm going to turn the feedback off. Shut up, computer. Oh, it's still going to do it. Okay, whatever. Knight f4. The point is, if my opponent takes on d3, then the bishop hangs. Simple. My knight also wants to come to the h5 square to put further pressure on my opponent's position. Or come to d5 
to put pressure on my opponent's position. I had a really um, cool game in the Vienna on one of the other videos in my channel where the knight ends up on d5 and just completely slaughters my opponent. It's a cool game. You should check it out. So my opponent goes bishop to e6. The bishop was under attack. He goes to e6 to get it defended. And knight d5 is now, long, now no longer a threat because he can just take it. Here, I should take on c5. I got a bit tunnel visioned. I really want to mate my opponent. <clears throat> so I go knight to h5, putting pressure on the dark squares in my opponent's position. And the reason I play this is because I saw a very specific line. Now, black can avoid this specific line with pawn g6. But then he loses the bishop and he just weakened his dark squares. It's not an easy move to make. c5 still hangs in all these variations. So the computer says plus 0.6. With opposite colored bishops and the fact that black has no pawns on dark squares, I think this is way easier to play with white. But my opponent takes on d3. And here, there's a really, really cool move. Rook takes g7. If the bishop takes the rook, then queen g1. And this is mate. And black has no way to defend it. The only move black has to defend his bishop is queen f6, which loses a queen. So rook takes g7. That's why I play knight h5. So we've established black can't take. So what if he just moves? Yeah. Black can just move. Here I should retreat the rook. But I insist. I go queen g1 and go, you can't take me, this is mate. Yes, that is mate. Here, black needs to basically ignore my attack and play either bishop takes e2 or d takes c2. Everything else is bad. Who's going to play that? This looks so scary. My opponent goes rook g8 because it looks like I've got a checkmating attack. But after rook takes g8, queen takes g8, I have knight takes f6 because the queen has relieved her defense of the knight and I'm just up a piece. And the queen is under attack, so queen moves, takes, takes, then I take on d3, and we go into an endgame where I'm up a piece. And yes, it's winning. Yes, my whole plan worked. Yes, also, my opponent played inaccurately. But he's also rated 2100+. plus. So if he's going to make those mistakes, let's be honest, your opponents are going to make those mistakes. If you're above 2100 and watching this video, maybe you shouldn't be watching me. You know, let's be realistic here. Um, you should probably be watching, like, another titled player. But... For you people under 2000, which I would assume is like 99% of you, no offense, um, you need to be accurate here. I go d4. The point is, this pawn is very weak. And if I defend it with rook d1, then bishop c4 is a move. I can't really take because rook takes d1, and now it's a bit harder to win. So I go d4. After pawn takes, I have rook d1. And I inverse the pin. Pre in, this, in this variation, black uses the pin against me. In this variation, I use the pin against black. He can't take. This loses a rook. And yes, I can stop this pawn. Because after this, I have check and the king moves. And I have check and the king moves. And I get back in plenty of time to stop the pawn. And I save the knight. So my opponent goes d3. Guarding the pawn. Because this bishop no longer attacks it. I go bishop b6. I also have like no time. This is a very common theme. I never have time, man. Uh, and I attack the rook. Rook moves. I attack the rook again. Rook moves. And I go b4. King moves, knight to g5, and bishop c4. 
So I attack the pawn twice, my opponent defends the pawn twice, but I have a5 locking my bishop into place. The king moves, and I get the king into the party. And here, I have pawn f4 check. The king is forced back. I have pawn to e5 check. The king is forced to move. King to f3, bishop check, and king to e3. This pawn is lost because I have too many attackers now, and this king can't get into the game to help out. So although my bishop can't attack this pawn, my other three pieces can. And black can't use all three of his pieces to defend the pawn. Because the king can't get in, as I've created this wedge in the center. So my opponent goes g5 trying to break it apart. I take, he takes. But this means that knight takes d3 comes with check. And the problem is that the king is running out of squares. If the king steps onto the d-file, king d5, then I have a check, and he loses the rook. If the king tries to move to any of the dark squares, he can't, because all the squares are controlled. He can't go to either of these squares, because I control this one, and he has a pawn on this square. So we've established king d5 doesn't work. And if king to e6, then knight f4 check. And the king is under attack. And the rook sees the rook. And the king can't go to e7 because the bishop controls that square. So after the king moves, rook takes d8. I'm up a rook and a piece now. My opponent resigns. And the Vienna strikes again. But in this one, we have... A bit of a different system where we open the g file find the brilliant rook takes g7 and our opponent again is inaccurate but again opponents are always going to be inaccurate you're not you're not playing against stockfish you know you don't have to play a perfect move every move if you start playing moves like rook takes g7 your opponent's going to be like whoa what that's a thing and the position looks losing because you just allowed a rook takes g7 and you can't take it, you know? That is very demoralizing and chess is a very mental game. So don't underestimate the powers of dubious attacks. This isn't dubious, but my follow-up was dubious. King, sorry, queen um, g1 is unnecessary, but it didn't matter because, you know, we continued to put pressure on our opponent and rook g8 is just a bad move, even though it looks logical. So those are my two games in the Vienna that I wanted to share with you guys. I would highly, highly recommend giving this a go. It's such an easy opening to play. This is the setup. You just need to get this set up. Again, other videos on my channel have looked at what to do if you have like knight f6 in this position. If you have bishop c5, there's other ideas that you need to incorporate because the bishop being on B c5 compared to e7 makes a very different position because it stops you from going f4 and castling because your king would be in check. So if you want to see what to do in some of the other variations, please let me know in the comments. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.